Hi, my name is Elisa Alkins, and I'm a former GTA at Wayne State. And Professor Maruka invited me to speak with you about um, my experiences teaching literature online. And I'm really excited to share that insight with you. Um, so I have a kind of situation, what my experience was, and then I have a couple of tips that I hope are helpful um, as you go ahead um, teaching your online course. So I want to give you a rundown of my experiences teaching literature online. Um, so I started teaching literature online in the fall of 2014, and at that point I had just started my dissertation, um, which was kind of intimidating and could have been a real disaster because uh, dissertation writing uh, requires a lot of structure, as does teaching online. So um, I was kind of forced to learn how to manage my time correctly, um, and it really set me up to um, have really great habits. So what I ended up doing was writing in the morning and doing my online teaching stuff at night. Um, obviously, whatever works for you is best, um, but I just wanted to let you know that when you're in the dissertation writing stage and you're trying to teach literature online, it can be pretty challenging, but also really productive. Um, to throw a wrench into it, I was simultaneously teaching an online 1020 class, which was new to me as well. Um, and to further complicate it, I was also caring for my daughter full time, who was four months old. So I had a lot going on, but it was actually kind of great because it structured my day. So like I said, um, I would wake up in the morning, I would write my dissertation for about an hour, um, I would take care of my daughter all day, and then when she went to bed at night, I would do both of my online teaching, um, teaching obligations. Um, I also taught an unfamiliar topic. Uh, I ended up being assigned great English novels, which I was... Um, technically an American literature uh, person. So teaching great English novels ended up being great though. I taught um, taught a uh, sci-fi course, which was awesome. My students responded really well to it and it gave me some uh, diversity in my teaching experience. So overall, I had a ton of fun. Um, and although it was challenging, it really gave me a lot of great experiences on a variety of levels. Um, so I wanna share with you a couple of things that really helped me form my class and to make it a success. So the first thing that I would advise is that you prep your course in advance. It's a lot of preparation. Um, so as you probably know and can imagine, but might not be able to imagine, creating quizzes, assignments, and rubrics, and all of that stuff is very time intensive. So you might think that you can prepare the first couple of weeks and then kind of keep yourself going, but what might end up happening is when you're balancing grading and you're balancing responding to your students, you might not have the time that you think to post the assignments, to form the rubrics, and to do your lectures. Oh yeah, there's lectures as well. So I, um, I, when I did my class, I prepped it all first. I had the bare bones of it, and then I would add lectures every week. Um, and then I would spend my time grading, responding to students, etc. That means that during the actual course, you might not have as much work, but like I said, I mean, it takes a good solid um, all day, every day for about a week to create everything that you need for your class. But at the same time, it's all prepared for you. So that's really great. Um, and then an addendum to prepping your course in advance is that I f find it very productive to link everything within the page. And I'm actually going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to go to my course. So this is my um, British literature course, and this is uh, this is week two. So I have a kind of blurb about what the week is going to be about and, and really articulated instructions for for them. But then I also have a lecture and that's posted on it. And then I have links to not only the quiz, but I also have links to the discussion board and the blogs. So you can also have, as you notice on the left, um, you can have blogs and discussion board, just the general pages posted on there. But what I found to be really effective as well is to post everything that you are listing as things that are due um, to the bottom of the page so that they have access to that. I think that way students can really connect what they need to do with the week um, with what you're telling them they need to do. So that is helpful. 
Uh, one thing that I did, and it ended up being quite effective, is to build conferences into the course. I know a lot of people um, in their face-to-face -face classes like to have conferences. I also do conferences in those classes. But I think that actually online, it might almost be more important because you're accessing students in a way that is um, a lot more tangible. Online courses can be really difficult because you never see them. So you kind of never get a sense of them. But when you have conferences, you can talk to them about their work. You can talk to them about their lives. And in doing so, well, as much as they'll offer, but, um, you know, you're, ta you're connecting with them on a level that you would usually connect with them in the classroom. So um, I haven't really ever had a student find it difficult for me to meet with them because I offer a lot of ways to communicate. Um, a lot of students I Skyped, a few students I chatted with, and a few students I talked to on the phone. Um, and I would have to say that with my British literature class, it was kind of more of a fun thing um, to meet them because we had had so many great discussions um, through the class and I'd been reading their work. Um, but I have to share that with my 1020 class, I taught a 1020 class online this past summer, and I think that I actually, having conferences literally helped students go from failing to passing. Like, it was, it was that much of an impact. So I think that conferences for online courses can help students connect with you and connect with the course. You can connect with them. And it gives them a chance to um, really invest in the course in a way that they might not have. So I highly recommend um, I recommend this. And as for the distance thing, um, a lot of students who take classes online might just want the flexibility. So they'll already be around on campus. Um, but I also had students this summer, I had three students who were overseas. So I chatted with a student from Egypt, I chatted with a student from Poland, and it was a great, it was a great experience. Um, so I would highly recommend um, this strategy. And then the final one is to communicate in the discussion board with your students. So um, my participation grades or their participation grades that I set up for them um, depended on discussion board chats. So in addition to weekly quizzes or responses, discussion boards are a great way to monitor your students' comprehension of the novels or whatever works that you're looking at. Um, so I was able to see how students were responding to specific questions that I was asking. Um, it also gives students an opportunity to communicate with one another. Um, other than peer review, I don't do any group work. I know that Vinny and Melanie um, have successfully integrated uh, group work into their classes, but I was not able to do so. Um, so discussion board is a great way to see them communicating with each other, which is really awesome. Um, but when you join, when the instructor joins and they respond to things that students are saying, students get a better sense of where they stand and it gives you a chance to participate as well. And I wanted to kind of give you a, a sense of that um, as well. <clears throat> so I chose a thread from dis a discussion of Frankenstein. So um, this was like at the very beginning and I just asked them what their perception of the novel was and I actually give them guidelines. So I think their responses in order to count as a good response needs to be 150 words or something like that. Um, and then they can uh, add little um, other responses as well to kind of get a good thread going. So this was a student's response um, and then another student responded to her. And I also responded, and nobody responded to me on this one, but there were other times where maybe I would respond to somebody's response and then ask a question, and that would kind of keep the discussion going. I think that something that's really difficult about teaching online literature is the sense that you can't discuss the texts. I mean, that's kind of the best part of um, sitting in a classroom talking to students about literature is that you can you know, you can have that back and forth. You can have those really good breakthrough moments. Those moments can, I think, can be uh, replicated or at least kind of approximated um, through the discussion board function. But I think that in order to that for that to be successful, um, the uh, the participation of the instructor is um, is kind of key. Sorry if I'm talking fast. I haven't done this in a while. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time talking to you about all my tips and tricks and stuff, um, but I just wanted to offer a few things for you uh, to think about as you are thinking about um, or maybe even formulating your online course. So because I'm not in the class to respond to you guys, um, I'm going to offer up my email address. 
uh, a a l l k i n s at gmail.com. Um, and email me with any questions you have, or if you want to meet up and chat about teaching online um, or anything else, I would be happy to answer your questions. Um, I hope you are having a great semester, and um, Professor Maruka, thank you for having me, and good luck!